Yes, I have been speaking my truth more and more without judgment or attachment and staying in the higher frequencies. And I watch the reactions of others on awake who are in utter disbelief and reject it because of their programming. Question, as long as I am coming from a place of no judgment and truth and holding space for them to be where they are, shouldn't I continue to speak my truth? I'm not being triggered, but they are. Great question. Okay, so I have pretty much perfected this art. So I can give you a couple of different explanations here. Um, when you move into becoming authentic, there is going to be a point in time, and I talked about this yesterday in the workshop, where from the outside looking in, you speaking your truth feels very kind of heartless because you're not necessarily going with the commiseration and the misery and the, the victimization programs that everybody talks in, right? It's, it's like the third dimensional perspective is very victim perpetrator. Um, and if you're not either a victim or perpetrator, it's like, what do you, what language are you speaking? You know, what is this? This is all for what reason? I don't get it. You know, racism is blah, blah, blah. And so here we are, the total black sheets of the black sheets, sheets, the rainbow sheep, right? We walk in with our grand design formulas of speech and start talking about how divine everything is and how everything is awakening, not destruction. And people will look at us like we're growing horns out of our head, right? So one piece of advice that I can give you guys on your road to speaking your truth, because that is how you're going to open up your yourself. Um, you have to look at your throat as kind of a second vagina or a second genital, because it is about taking energy in and expressing energy out. It's a byproduct of feeding and the light language codes are the opposite frequencies there. So if the frequency of the sacral chakra is the downward triangle, this would be the forward triangle, right? So the energy is coming up and out. Anyways, it is very important for you to speak your truth, but there is a way, there is a way for you to completely be able to speak your truth and, and not trigger everybody around you. Okay. So it's, it's the art of changing your language into understanding that if you're speaking to a kindergartner from a PhD's perspective, you're going to piss off the kindergartner because the kindergartner doesn't know what you're saying. It hasn't gone through all of the elementary school and the junior high and life experience and dark night of the soul and blah, 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 and moved into awareness and wisdom. It ha doesn't have the formula that you have. It's still throwing crayons across the room and crying over nap time, right? It's not computing. So you can continue to speak your truth. And if it doesn't trigger you, you are giving a gift. You're planting seeds all around for people to get irritated and pissed off, but then the light bulb come on. Or, or you can start with positive aspects within the person. You can use compassionate communication. You can use soul speak in your communication. Because it's not so much about us having our righteous point of view, you guys. We know what we know. We know what we know. We know what is really going on. We know where it's heading us. We understand everything. So if it is a matter of you being right or kind, I would ask yourself, if I really need to be right right now, is this my higher self or is this my ego? I know I'm speaking my truth and it's really not triggering me. But is there a way for me to be able to speak my truth, plant these seats gently, allow someone to have their belief system while maybe I educate them gently, right? This is, master, this is a master art of communication. So I'm not expecting all of you to be like, oh yeah, I totally get this. Because there, there are levels of, of your speaking your truth and moving back into a safe, space of being authentic again when you start to uncover yourself. But the point of this message is, is I already know you're pretty advanced in, in what you know, how you know it, and the way you speak. So I'm, I'm directing this towards you, Christine. One of the things that I would recommend is that if you're going to speak your truth, you're going to do two things. You are going to trigger someone's belief systems or, and, because it's duality, inspire them. Okay, so inspire them is super easy to do if you kind of let down the um, 
kind of um, academic or the, and I, and I don't want to say you do this because you don't, but I know that this is for everybody. This kind of, I feel like sometimes we as spiritual people can be very preachy and very coachy and very righteous in what we believe and not that we are righteous. It's just, it's so matter of fact that sometimes once you move past the threshold of speaking your truth, you really do lose your filter and you, you stop speaking in terms of sheep when you are definitely a shepherd. But if you want to continue to have vibrational relationships that are below your your floor that you reside or below, below your level of awareness, you're going to have to speak to them in a way that doesn't irritate their demons so much. And, and what you can do is, you know, if you think about the idea, we were just talking about the, the global Christ consciousness. If you think about the idea of Jesus and the stories, whether you believe them or not, is that he spent time with the sinners and you know, the homeless and, you know, the people that were considered lower, you know, as far as what they did. Um, and, you know, he didn't walk upon them and just like, Bleh, you know, he got to know them. He got to know their triggers. He got to know, you know, their pain. He got, he was a good listener. Um, and he didn't listen to respond. He listened so that he could change his language and move it into a space so that the person who had walls up already, see, here's the thing is you're talking to, speaking to, working with, um, disseminating to those who have major walls up, okay? Now, you may have your walls down and you're like, hey, I'm just here to love everybody, but the people that you love and speak to have major walls over. So if you say, hey, it's time to take your walls down or don't wear a mask or blah, 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 and that pushes against their belief systems, you're making an enemy, even though you're planting a seed. And the more times they hear this, the more times they will awaken. So you're still, here's the thing, you really can't get this wrong. It's just, do we want to practice planting seeds of awareness and waking people up with our truth? Or do we want to take it one step further and master the art of compassionate communication and start with appreciation, understanding, allowing, accepting, and then sharing our perspective? Like, I love that you're so passionate about this. I love that you're on the front line of this protest. I love what you're doing for our community. I love that your heart is involved in this. And I have this perspective over here that I am helping assist this way. So instead of the, you know, because you guys, your belief systems are your belief systems and not everybody is going to have the same universe as you. So you could be saying the same thing to someone, have someone else tell them in a different language that matches more of their belief system. And they're going to believe the other person. You're going to be like, I just said that, right? Haven't you ever said something to your spouse and, or your partner or your kids? And they're just like, and then, you know, I say it or another teacher says it or their boss says it or blah, blah, blah. And they come home with this like aha moment. And you're like, kill me. I just literally said that, right? So you really need to um, understand first and foremost, if you're going to be a higher level of consciousness, it is your job to figure out without judgment where the people that you're speaking to are and ask yourself, would I rather be kind or right? Because right now, I would say that it's, uh, if you already know and you're pretty certain with your belief systems, be kind. Be kind. You're going to wake up the masses so much more with your kindness right now than you are your knowledge. Bottom line. You are going to do more good through kindness, allowing, acceptance, right? Peace, joy, play then you are going to be standing on a mountaintop preaching your perspective, okay? So, I mean, that's just me, four kids. My, I have all different levels um, of awareness and belief systems. And I notice that when I allow my children to vent and be and do, and then I demonstrate what I'm demonstrating, they always come back around and be like, mom, what, what did you do that for? Or how come you did it that way? And then I'm like, oh, it's just because this is what I believe. And they're like, oh, right. Instead of me pushing, right, 
because it isn't our job to push our belief system. It is our job to demonstrate them, okay? And I know you know this, but if you're triggering people out in the world, right, and you're going to, like, it's, it's, you could literally walk on eggshells for the rest of your life and still piss someone off. It's just something you're going to get used to. And remember, sometimes you're giving them love. Sometimes you're giving them a box, box of darkness. Either one is incredible for their expansion. But for me, you know, I have always had a very gentle heart. So for me, I would bite my tongue. Like if I went to a big barbecue right now and, you know, didn't know anybody, I would assume that not everybody has the same belief system as me. And I would assume that not everybody is on the journey that I am. So my job at that barbecue is to be to get to know who they are and where their belief systems are and love them at those belief systems and hopefully make an impact with my consciousness without disturbing their state of being and create a conversation around their ideas and bring kindness and, I, and unique perspectives into their ideas without crumbling their world right? It's an art. It, you're going to practice it. It's harder with your kids because you're connected to them and you have shadows and blind spots within your children that you don't know about. So you may not think you're getting triggered, but if you ask three layers deep, conscious, no trigger, unconscious, no trigger, unconscious trigger, right? So you're going to have to play the part of higher level of awareness and and really sit with yourself about what your intentions are. Like, what are your intentions for speaking your truth? You know, are you ready to go all the way and be hated? You know, it's kind of like, I always go back to Martin Luther King and I have used Martin Luther King to channel his energy many times over the years, usually at second Sundays, usually during political times, he'll step in and, and talk to me. And what I noticed is what from him is he didn't care if he was liked. He didn't care if he was admired. He didn't care if he died. He did not care. He cared about his family dying, but he did not care whether he was liked, admired, or anything. He had a very important message inside of him. And he used compassionate communication to speak to everyone about it, regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. He was on a very exact mission, right? He was going to speak his truth. And he pissed a lot of people off. And he inspired a lot of people. So I guess you have to sit with what is my intention behind speaking this truth right now? Or is it better to be kind than right? Because we know you're right. We know we're right in our belief systems, in our universe, because we have a different level of consciousness. So if I asked a kindergartner a question and I asked someone with a PhD a question, they would both be right because from their levels of awareness, they are correct. Because the kindergartner only has access to this much information in their life. So whatever they know is right for them. And whatever this person knows is right for them. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of perspective. Okay, all right. Next is Lacey. I would love to hear your thoughts on the three days of darkness I keep hearing mentioned. I figured let's find the metaphor before any fear can set in. Thanks for the insight. So, you know, this is in the Bible. This is in all the prophecies. This is in all the books, three days of darkness. So when we look at the probabilities and the timelines of what this could mean metaphorically, is this like a, is this a metaphor or is this actually going to happen? Well, I'll tell you it's both. And so when we look at probabilities, I'm going to tell, tell you how the future is actually set up. Your futures are set up in where your focus is. So as a psychic, right, and this goes for any psychic, there's they're accessing where light is shining in your future realities, like your like where your like manifestations are heading, right? Where are you looking at right now? So your future is determined by what you're looking at right now. So if I was like holding a flashlight against the wall that flashlight, the consciousness would be you. And whatever the wall saw would be highlighted. And then that would be echoed out into the future and multiplied into different scenario systems that matched where your current focus is. 
So whatever I'm looking at right now, right, is going to be a byproduct of the future. Now, because I'm looking a little bit over here and a little bit over here and a little bit over here, because humans are so terrible about being focused on what they want, most of the time they're focused on a little bit of what they want and a lot of what they don't want. So your future scenarios are going to be kind of like projected into, obviously there's millions and millions and millions of probable futures, but when a psychic is looking at your timeline or when the psychics who dictated the prophecies in the Bible and you know all of the books that you guys have access to right now that talk about the three days of darkness, it's basically looking at what has happened already as a domino effect and where the mass population is looking at right now and then projecting that into the future. So right now we have six or seven planets in retrograde. We had a lunar eclipse. We've got a comet meteor that's literally gonna come into our, our atmosphere very closely. It's not gonna hit our planet, but it's gonna, it's, it's gonna go by. And if you've ever been standing um, and, and, and on a road and had a Mack truck drive by, that will be what it feels like when this kind of meteor asteroid goes. Now, now, based on us, okay, based on where we are looking and where we are focusing, that could technically create a huge electromagnetic short where it could short out everything. Like your computers will be like, bzz, right? Your electrical so sockets that are plugged into things, bzz, right? Now, every negative is a shortcut, right? So if you've ever noticed that in when they need to get your heart going, they need to put those two paddles on your chest and go, bzz, right? So there is a probability, there is a probability that we will experience this grand zap from this big shift of this basically, you know, six or seven planets in retrograde, which means are spinning backwards and lunar eclipse, eclipse, which means like moving into non-duality. That's the experience of new duality sitting in a year 2020, which is basically non-duality and infinity right so duality duality equals non non-duality vision quest year worlds moving move the world is aware right now that the world is changing you know when they say this isn't a pandemic it's an awakening the reason why it's an awakening is because everybody's paying attention everybody's like what's going to happen next that's awakening i'm awake you have my attention what i do with that awakened state whether I piss it away and watch the news 24 hours a day or I go out and plant a garden, that's my choice. But there is many probabilities that this whole kind of energetic, you know, moons aligning will create an electromagnetic pulse that will zap us and we will have three days of basically learning how to reboot our systems. And in that three days, the heart will be resurrected and the ascension will be really speeding up, really speeding up. But that is worst case scenario, okay? I'm being honest with you guys. That is the worst case scenario. There are also many probabilities where that doesn't happen, okay? And we literally get the upgrades by doing our work and sharing love. And it's almost like path of least resistance. If your parents were like, I need to get this child to brush her teeth, right? And she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. What is the path of least resistance? So right now, based on the timelines of the past, we are ridiculous in following through with what we say. So the prophecy says, that we will need three days of darkness at the zap point to shift electromagnetic energies, reinstall the poles or whatever is gonna happen from a, from a pol polarity perspective and have basically three days of us with you know candlelight dinners, right? I mean, that's the worst case scenario. Now that's gonna cause mass, mass, uh, mass awakenings because they're gonna be receiving the boop right? It's going to get some walls around your heart gone. Boom. So every negative is always a shortcut, guys. This is not the end of times. It is the end of 3D and the beginning of times. This is the end of suffering and the beginning of love. 
So whatever we need to go through, we will grow through. So that's basically what that prophecy means. And it's in a lot of psychic books. It's in Edward Casey's book. It's in the Bible. It's, it's, it's in so many places. So there is a probability that that could occur soon. Like, you know, some people said it was going to happen on the 23rd of May. Some people said it was going to happen on the 27th. Some people are saying it's not going to happen until middle of June or July. It doesn't, because again, the future is determined by our focus, right? So you may be building a reality with you that you're already existing in the fifth dimension and you're already living in a state of non-duality and none of your none of your system breaks down because your heart is already back online. And I mean, let's like, let's, I'm gonna talk about this in second Sunday, but which is gonna be a really, really emotional second Sunday because I've got a lot of stuff to share with you. But isn't it interesting that they're rolling out 5G technology when we're moving into a state of fifth dimension? And I will tell you that underneath this heart wall that you have is your telepathic energy. One of the first things that's going to return to you, maybe even before your clairvoyance, is your ability to speak from heart, from heart to heart. Now, heart to heart, not mind to mind. Mind is not connected to another mind. A mind is connected to pictures and images and, and uh, polarity and duality, okay? A heart is connected as a, a unified space of consciousness. So one of the things that when your heart wall breaks down is you are going to return to being telepathic. Now, 5G technology is also telepathic. Haven't you guys ever experienced thinking about something and then all of a sudden, boom, on your device or your computer, it's the exact pair of shorts that you were just thinking that you wanted to buy, right? And you're like, I didn't even say anything. And I wasn't searching for anything because the 5G technology is going into the cloud to look at your thoughts. You have a, there is a cloud of thoughts. There is you that reside in the cloud and you are being telepathically communicated through the fifth dimension, which is why I'm like, breathe, you guys, breathe. Stop thinking, stop thinking. Not that any of that is bad because, hey, you're gonna get some shorts you want and you didn't even have to understand it, but that's what 5G technology is and that's what 5D technology is, is this telepathic energy of the heart. They're using the energetic te te telepathic energy of the mind to determine who and what you are. Okay, so I just wanted to throw out that tidbit. So hopefully that made sense. Moving on. Good question. Okay, Tina. Tina says, um, hi, Jess. I just had a thought, and maybe it's obvious, but will all the dark energy leaving the planet but turned into light? They have to go dumb where to finish karma. What planet will take them? Um, okay, so... That's another loaded question because the probabilities on that particular question are endless. So I'm just going to give you maybe two or three different concepts. Um, most of the dark energy is off planet anyways. Okay. Um, this is where the puppeteering happens. Earth is where the puppeteering happens. Most of the dark energy is is residing outside of planet and it's all using frequency and vibration to basically turn on the minions right and um to turn on the frequencies now i'm not saying that there's not dark energy that reside on the planet but i'm talking about the really higher ups like the higher 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 ups just like the higher 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 ups of the galactic federation are not on earth they're not okay the, they are channeling the message to us right and then we're speaking that through our human bodies so because again you have to understand with density and light there's going to be beings that there's too much density on the planet to vibrate which means they couldn't like breathe that's a it's that's a poor choice of word because it's not actually what's happening but they wouldn't be able to they would just create too much expansion on the planet with their consciousness it's almost like if a sun dropped down on the planet the whole planet would go so they got to stay where where they can vibrate and dark energy the same they there's too much light on this planet for some of those darker energies so they have to reside off planet and they send the signals through the channeling effects and then we go either i'm unconscious and i go 
oh, I'm going to play out this dark energy, or I'm conscious, oh, I'm going to play out this light energy through my higher perspective, okay? So that's a matter of, like, Earth is not linear, and it's not one place. Earth is a multidimensional, it has several different atmospheres within the atmosphere, which means there is beings underneath the, the Earth that have their own atmosphere and their own communities and their own realities and their own lives. And there is beings in the atmosphere before where, above what you see before you get into what call what we would call the idea of space because this is a holographic universe. So it's almost like when you walk into a sports bar, right? And you walk in and there's hundred different TVs on the wall and they're all playing different different stories. That's Earth. Earth has tons and tons and tons of different dimensions that can broad stream a television show inside the sports bar. But that is the, the football team is not in the sports bar. They are broadcasting from somewhere else and they are shining in and having an experience in the sports bar, but also somewhere else. Hopefully I'm not confusing you because now you're getting into the whole, whoo, this is really fun. So with that, is really more about the third dimensional reality is going back into density. So if you guys have watched my Ascension and Reascension uh, webinars and you've like taken some of my other workshops, I, I talk about the Ascension and like how it actually happens. And so Earth goes through a, a Ascension, which is an expansion. Uh, and so she's like, so imagine it's just a bigger house with more light and more beauty and more substance and more information. And then she can also contract into like this really tight, dense, 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 dense rock and compact everything. And the reason why she does that every, I don't know, you know, couple million years or whatever it is. I don't know the exact dates because time is linear. Time isn't linear. It doesn't really exist. So trying to come up with time doesn't make sense. But when she goes back into her compacted phase, she basically creates a zip drive boop, of everything that's happened up to date. She compacts it into a zip drive and then sends it into the center of the core, right? And that turns into crystals. That turns into gold. That turns into diamonds. And inside these diamonds, crystals, gold, silver, platinum, are literally the history of the universe itself, which is why they're so valuable. Now, when she expands, she's learning, she's growing, she's downloading, she's experiencing, and then she's like, okay, we're good. Now let's go back into our compact temp, compact phase, and let's zip drive everything. That's why they call Earth the living library, because she's stored everything that's ever happened in the universe right here, okay? In the beings, in the plants, in the nature, in the, in the air, in the clouds, in you, every one of us. So when she does that, we just came out of that. We just came out of that, which is what they, you know, what they call like um, the Big Bang or something, or, you know, all of a sudden dinosaurs are gone. Like, where'd they go? Well, they're in the hard drive now. They're in the zip drive. So we have the memory of them, but they're not walking on the planet now. Here we are now having our experience and this too, We'll go into an ascension and reascension phase, but we are basically creating a new earth out of her expansion now. But because this is a free world planet, those who still choose to believe in suffering, in fear, in lack, in separation will break off and have a whole new holographic experience, like a rerun of the third dimension and they will be vibrating and living in the third dimension while you coherently vibrate in another reality. And all that's gonna look like to you is that this person over there is living hell on earth and you're living heaven on earth and you don't know why they keep making that choice and you don't know why they keep getting hit by a car and you don't know why they keep running out of money because you never do. But you might be aware of it, but you, you don't cross the path because technically you're in two worlds. So it's not a matter of, are they going to leave the planet? A lot of it's just going to integrate and you are integrating back into yourself. You're bringing your fractal consciousness back in, you're healing your heart, you're moving into awareness, you're having expanded reality. And that's going to help you shift into um, higher levels of, of 
the planet's experience, you're going to be more on her expansive process than her destructive process. Because basically what will happen is the more work you do, the more 3D will start disappearing in your eyes. And you'll start having family and friends that vibrate more like you and the versions of you that you are moving into. There will be people, places, and things to support, support that and opportunities to support that and people to support that and money to support that or econ economics to support that because money will change. But over here, they're going back into regression and they will go through that third world war and famine and destruction and they will basically break themselves down to the zero point and so they can build themselves back up to basically walk in your footsteps now now technically i don't talk about this a lot but my particular higher self is from the future who has already gone through this like i've already gone through this and i'm channeling myself from future earth that's how i know love wins right I'm channeling myself through future earth where we've already gone through this process. And so I'm sending the signal to me, this version of me, that's now walking in the direction of forward motion and giving myself the future coordinates of how we get there. That's why I'm so adamant with you guys and so passionate because I'm like, look, this is already done. If we would just line up with joy, just go play, right? Stop, stop buy, buying into the fear because it's going to take this longer, okay? All right, so hopefully that made sense. Okay, I think we got time for one more. Okay, Adrian, and then Kayland, I will get to you Thursday morning, all right? Um, Adrian says, hey Jess, not sure if you've covered this before, but wondering what your thoughts are on 5G and its reported effects. Okay, so I kind of talked about 5G, 5G a little bit. Now, I never see anything as bad or good. Everything is just, it, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a possibility stuck in a limit, or it's a necessary evil for expansion, or it's uh, awakening, or it's um, a pressurized growth formula. There is no bad and good. So when people are like, 5G, 5G, I'm going, okay, we are moving into 5D. So as, as the darkness rises, the light rises. So 5G will have no effect on your body as long as you're doing your work, as long as you're doing your work. Now, what is your work? Concentrate on your shadows, concentrate on love, concentrate on showing up for yourself, being um, a good example of, of kindness and, and gratitude, um, you know, don't live a life of where you're constantly trying to protect yourself. You know, really understand you create your own reality, how you create your own reality, how you vibrate, because your vibration that's coming out of your body is going to be much bigger than any poison they could put on earth, okay? You are the antidote within your heart. Now, if you're not in your heart and you're in your head, 5G can be a messy mess, right? It can it can scramble frequencies, it can erase your mind, it can read your mind, it can make you really electromagnetically charged, but that comes from you not occupying your own space. That comes from you not being present. So shame on that, right? So your job, if you wanna be bigger than 5G, you gotta be 5D, okay? All right, guys, 